Hey friends, welcome back. Now we are going to continue our Merne stack series. This is our e-commerce project. And in this video, we are going to work on some facts. So in the previous couple of videos, we have created categories. We have worked on adding of categories. We can edit the categories and we can also delete the categories. So now the problem with the delete is if we are trying to delete some of them, let's say cat two, we might end up deleting everything, right? All of these like home and furniture because this is got expanded and I'm including this category also so this is we are going to fix in the next video probably and in this video we are going to work on FX that is related to the user authentication that is actually sign in and sign out part so here you can see if I'm trying to add something let's try to create a new categories so we'll say add we'll write something like a new category Right, so this is a new category. Uh, we will add it as a root category and I will say save changes. So here you can see this is the API call create and this is the status 500. And you might notice uh, for all the cases we are returning either 200, 201 or 400 for all the error cases, right? So right now we are using three different, three status, 200 for okay status, 201 something got created and 400 if something uh, happened wrong from our side, right? So you can check, uh, this is our VS Code project and this is the Mon backend. If you go to the source folder, let's start with the common middleware and here we have a couple of uh, checking, like here we are checking all uh, uh, the user is locked in or not using this middleware require sign in and here in this, if else block we are checking token uh, exist or not if something goes wrong then we are returning this 400 right so this is up to us we can return uh, 400 500 but as you can see if so here we are trying to create a category and we have got 500 that's because this got true uh, header uh, actually authorization token exists this is fine here we are uh, splitting the authorization header we are getting the token Okay, and we are uh, verifying the token like uh, with the secret key and this verify is actually uh, giving an exception or uh, because of that we are getting 500 uh, because the token is actually expired. That's why we are getting 500 over here. So this is uh, something like token expired, right? So we have to handle these things, right? And let me show you how we can handle. So this is uh, the situation like a user is already locked out and we are in the dashboard. We are in the admin dashboard. So this shouldn't happen, right? When we are logged out, it should immediately move to the login page or sign up page instead of staying in this home page, right? So for that, we are going to fix this. We are going to use some Axios help. Uh, okay, let me show you how we can use. So first, let's start with our admin front end part. And here we have source, here we have actions, here we have category on actions. And this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to add a, so this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to create a new category for that. We are making this category create request. Okay. And there, uh, here we are using, uh, we are making a call and we can handle this call using uh, uh, try catch, right? You can do one thing. Uh, this is try, you can take the try, you can take the catch. And you can take the error over here and you can console uh, dot log error, right? You can also see over here in the console, if you go to the console, you can see the red uh, warnings or the error. It's internal server error, right? You have got a request failed with the status course 500. So we can avoid all of these things, right? So let me show you how. So let's first take this, right? And let's put inside the try. Okay, so this is the try. Let's format the document. And here you can see this is uh, so this request we are handling within the try. If it got failed, then it is going to catch block, and we are going to console the error, right? So let's save this, and let's go to the application again. Reload the application, and something went wrong okay fine uh, internet issue so there uh, here everything is working fine now let's try to add something let's say new cat okay let's clear the console again and let's uh, uh, add uh, okay make it a new parent category right save changes and this time instead of getting a red uh, warnings I've got a plain text that is uh, error request failed with the status code 500 
and here it is again uh, 500 right so i just uh, uh, given you an idea you can console your error like that okay but here you can get more information in the catch block right you can do one thing uh, you can check the status you can do like uh, const okay you'll say uh, error dot response okay so the response is a property with an error dot response you can get the status over here or let's you can do simply console over first to the console part right we'll simply say console error dot response you're going to get a lot of information a lot of useful information you can handle errors and lots of things so error dot response and all it's to the console uh, reload clean the console add something okay anything is fine okay so let's try to add this okay save changes and you can see what we have got we have got a uh, object so, okay so this is a response object error response object and this is what we have uh, printed like you if you see this is a doc type html lang meta whatever that's what we have just printed and you can see other properties like we have got status 500 we have got uh, request we have got headers uh, what is the header content type request type so the more important thing is over here is status based on the status we, we can decide what is it okay so this is one way to handle it you can put try and catch you can check the status you can extract the status from the response and you can check if the status is 500 means something wrong with the token and you can immediately make the user log out from the application right so you have to do this try catch uh, everywhere that's a good thing right you you wrap uh, all the api calls with the try catch that's a very good thing and we have one more option to handle it in a very good way with the help of axios so let me show you how so let's keep it uh, over here as it is don't uh, uh, do over the changes over here okay we'll do the we'll do the global change with the help of axios so here okay where is the axios actions and here we have uh, helpers and here we have exios so this is what instance right we are returning this instance and then we are making call with the base url we know the base url we have authorization so that makes so here after the login or like you, if the token exists in the local storage based on that we are getting that token right we are getting that local storage token and we are assigning it to the authorization and we are thinking okay this is a, a true this is a right token and this is what we are looking for but actually that token got expired so you have to uh, do something about it right so for that we uh, we can use axios instance and we can add a uh, middleware over here with the uh, with axios like we have added in the back end part right so we'll say axios instance interceptors dot request and dot use and here we we can make a a callback function we can write a callback function right and here we're going to get a request right and we can return the request this is one thing okay one more uh, middleware exios dot interceptors right it's in interceptors dot instead of uh, request i'm going to say response dot use and over here again it requires a callback right and you can find the document of it over here So this is going to be a response, right? So let me show you the overview of the documentation, okay? So we'll say Axios, right? Axios npm, or let's go to the GitHub. So this is the URL github.com for so slash Axios, Axios. Okay, uh, let's find the interceptors. So there are lots of things available over here. So we're looking for the interceptors, right? So this is the interception by which what you can do you can handle the request uh, you can modify the request payload before uh, sending the request and you can handle the uh, response before actually uh, response received by the action okay so this is what we are doing uh, so add an interceptor over here use a function that's a config so here config is nothing but the request object and that's simply return and it takes a second argument that's to handle the error right so you can take the second argument and you can handle the error you can simply reject or whatever you want you can do something request okay the same thing we're going to do over here right so we'll do for the first we'll handle the response so let's write something so you're getting error the same error will get here whatever we have just seen in the console.log right 
so we'll say console dot log and we'll say error right and we have to return promise sorry promise dot reject this promise is going to reject right and we'll before that will uh, response will will console the response okay now let's reload the application this time you're going to see something different okay let's add and let's clean the console let's add a new cat right and let's save changes and you can see we have got printed it two times one is because we are printing in the action itself here this is the reason and the second one is because of this we are printing over here so this is the response we have received and before sending it to the action we just uh, consoled it and then it got to the uh, action right and there um, okay that is fine so here we are we are getting the same information and here we can handle it right so let's do something so let's first get the status so we'll say const We'll extract the status okay we'll see the status and here we're gonna say error dot response right so if status equal to equal to 500 means so uh, the token is something wrong with the token someone modified the token or token is actually expired so user needs to be locked out right and there uh, so what we can do here so we can dispatch an action to log the user we have already written the action as you can see in the auth actions right so we have an action we can dispatch right so here we have sign out and we can simply uh we can this we can dispatch this action right we can make the admin for slash sign out or sign out these cases but the thing is over here these actions only work from the component right so you're making a call to this sign out from the component and that's why uh, and there you are using something that is use dispatch uh, so with the help of use dispatch you are dispatching the action that's why that worked but here you are out of the component uh, you cannot do the hooks over here right so for that we have something uh, we have a store right so we'll say store from and we'll use something like help us no sorry not help us it's actually a store and we are out of the directory right now and we're gonna say store so we have the store right now over here and here we're gonna say store dot dispatch and we'll simply display from now we can dispatch action from here so we'll simply say type and it is going to be auth constants dot uh, log out or maybe sign out no sorry it's log out log out underscore uh, success right and also you have to clear the storage look at storage dot clear right let's save this so here we are dispatching the action and then we are returning it right so let's see it is going to work or not so this is one thing so when you are trying to create the uh, make the request let's add and you'll see new cat and you got to know your token got expired save changes and you can see we are in the sign in page we have we just immediately dispatch an action that is logout success and that makes everything uh, uh keep in the initial state okay uh, now we can log in actually at the read web script this is not solved completely yet dot info now go to the one two three four five six let's submit the request home category now let's try to add it again right so we'll say over here a uh, category and we'll say new cat and now let's try we just logged in we have a completely new token right so expecting i'm expecting this is going to be bad right you might expecting the same let's do the save change and boom this happened so you are in the logged in page why this happened so let's go to the request again and let's see the last request you made create and this is the 500 intelligence server error that's okay uh, that's that's why we are in the login page right we have got 500 and here you can see you have authorization also bearer and this is the token right so if you check the response uh, you have got JWT expired again so why this happened right so this happened because of uh, you somehow you are using the old token you just uh, sent an old token right uh, with the here what we are doing we are adding headers we are taking the authorization we are passing in the bear right so somehow you are you have the old token and uh, you are using the old token okay 
So to solve this problem, what we're going to do here, we have request. So here, uh, what we have to do, we have to assign a new token, what we have got uh, after the login, right? Instead of using the old uh, local storage token, right? So what we can do, we can get the new updated token from the state itself. So we'll say auth, uh, we'll say auth, right? Equals to, uh, we can use store over here, store dot get state function to get the state information. And if you call, then we're, we can access the get token, right? Let's say if uh, auth uh, dot token, right? If auth dot token exists, then we are going to say request dot headers dot authorization equals to, we'll say bearer space dollar, and we'll say auth dot token. Else case, it will be empty like usual. And then we'll send the request. So this request will take the completely updated and new token and this is going to work okay so now let's try again and we'll see so let's go to the face uh, browser and let's uh, let's try to log in again okay akshay at the read web script dot info password okay so we have got over here and now let's try to add a new uh, category so let's go and add a new category so we'll say new cat and now let's save changes and you can see we have added a new category successfully without any problem because this time we have a completely new session we have totally new token and then it's working totally fine right so this is cool thing we have done over here and one more thing i have to do like for our cases like if you go to the back end part you, you can see for all the error cases we are doing the 400 part right so the 400 uh, for example user admin or admin uh, or sign in uh, isn't correct then it is going to return uh, 400 cases so for that also you can do uh, you can write in the axios itself the status triple equals 500 or status uh, equals to equals to 400 that is also for the wrong uh, token or something wrong with the token, right? So let me verify it with the backend. We might have to change few things. So let's use a source and let's use a controller. So all these 400 cases are for the authentication related and we have to make user uh, log out from the application immediately, right? Let's see other cases, right? So if you go to the controller and go to auth.chase, here also we are returning a 400, that is fine. That is sign in and sign out. Let's go to category.js and here also we are saying 400. So actually guys, we have to change this 400 to something else or we can either return 500 in these cases, something went wrong. So we can have the single case instead of using status 400. We can simply remove status 400 and you can replace all the 400 with 500, right? You got my point. So you update your code. We'll meet in the next video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye-bye.